on day two of unit five. Day two of unit five. <clears throat> this is called linear applications. So, right, linear applications. All right, the word linear means it's going to be a line on the graph, like if you graphed it, it would make a straight line. Applications in math usually means word problem type situations. Or in real life situations, how would you use this math? Which it's kind of deceiving because in real life situations, there's usually some sort of computer program or calculator type thing that'll do it for you. Um, but that's okay. But this is in, in math world, real life situations. That's what we're gonna do. All right, so first thing I kind of need to go over with you <clears throat> is some stuff about slope. So in word problems, in graphs, Can y'all see that okay without that light on it? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> in word problems and graphs, if the rate is increasing, the slope is positive. So if the rate is increasing, the slope is positive. So it's something going up, like, um, <coughs> like, let me think of a good one. Like, um, if you're paying for renting a car and you have to pay per day, and so every day you keep it, it goes up, right? So that's an increasing rate. That is a positive slope. Um, if it's something like a bucket that you're draining water out of, though, the rate is how much water is coming out of that bucket, because you're, you're draining, or like a, ice chest and you pull the plug on it to drain all the water out of it, um, that's a decreasing rate because, you know, the water level is going down, the water is leaving. So that's a decreasing slope. So if the rate is decreasing, the slope is negative. And you have to know this because we're going to be able to look at word problems and write the equation straight from the problem. But you're going to have to decide is this a positive slope or a negative slope as you write the problem. So that's why I wanted you to write this down. Um, there's some clue words you can look for to find where the slope is in the word problem. And there's some clue words you can look for to find the y-intercept in the word problem. So clue words. We're going to have clue words for slope and then clue words for y-intercept. So for slope, your clue word is rate um, or you see the words per, each, or every. Usually slope is right there with that. Like if I'm going 50 miles per hour, that 50 is my slope. That's going to be my rate of change is 50 miles every single hour. Okay, so if you see any of those words, now it's not always true, but usually if you see those words, that usually means it's your slope. Um, for y-intercept, y-intercept is a starting amount. Anything that says initial fee. Um, service charge. Of anything else that you can kind of use. Anything that's kind of like that. Anything that you begin with, that's your y-intercept. That's where you're starting out at. Because if you think about a graph, and you think about that first quadrant, and you have just that, that first part of the graph, the y-intercept is wherever it starts out over here on that side, right? On the up and down. So that's where it's going to cross the y. And so if your graph is going like, I don't know how to do it without drawing a picture. But like on your notes pages that we're looking at, like this one, that's the y-intercept right there. Because this is the y and this is the x. Does that make sense? So that's where it's starting out. So in this particular graph, they're starting out with 
a certain amount of money and going up from there. And then on this particular graph, they're starting out right here and going down from there. Okay, so that's how graphs, it's easier to kind of tell from a graph. But if you see anything that says starting amount, beginning amount, beginning fee, service charge, anything like that, those are your, and that's your um, y-intercept every time. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to do the three, we're going to do the two graphs and the one with the table. So if you want to cut those out, the notes are kind of all out of order, but the computer wouldn't let me switch them around without messing everything up, so I just left it. So if you'll cut out the little table that's by itself in the middle of the page. Which one? The one that says number of days and re rental charge. Cut that little table out, and then you can cut out those two graphs. And leave the word problems for a little bit. On the graphs, you're going to want the words that go with it. So don't cut out those graphs by themselves. These ones? Those two graphs. Mm -hmm. glued down at the bottom of your page with the table and then the one that says um, the graph shows the altitude of an airplane as it comes in for a landing. on a test, on a star test, this will always be your X 
This will always be your Y. They're not going to switch those on you, ever. So you don't have to worry about that. That will always be your X. Your independent will come first. Your dependent will come second every single time. Okay, so don't worry about ever that. Some people worry that that's not always going to be the case. So I just want to make sure you know that. So on this side, what's happening? How much is it changing every time? Mm -hmm. Over here? Oh. Over here, it's going up one every time. And then over here, it's going up the 15. So my rate or my slope is the change in the y numbers over the change in the x numbers. Do you remember those little triangles? Change in y over change in x. Okay, so what's the change in y number? 15. 15. What's the change in x number? 1, that reduces to just 15. Correct? Because this is plus 15, adds 15 each time. This one adds 1 each time. Okay, would you say this is an increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Increasing. How can you tell? Because it goes up. Because it's going up on both sides, right? That would be increasing. So since this is increasing, my slope is going to be positive or negative? Positive. Positive. So I can use positive 15. There's my m number. I've taught you an equation that's called point-slope form, where you could pick any point off this table, use the slope, and write the equation. Do you all remember that? Sort of. I know it's had Thanksgiving break, but maybe you remember it. I need to zoom in. Maybe not There we go. Okay, so we've done point slope form where you do y minus a y number equals m times x minus the x number. Do y'all does that ring a bell with anybody in here? Yes. Okay. So we're gonna pick one of these points. Which point looks good to y'all? I don't care. Seventy-five. Two and seventy-five. That sounds good. Okay, we'll do 2 and 75. So it's y minus, what's the y number on 2 if we're using this point right here? 75. 75 equals, what's my m number? 2. No, no, 15. 15. And then times x minus the x number, which is 2. Okay, do y'all remember that? Writing those equations like that? Mm -hmm. We're just yes. filling in the 2 for the x number, 75 for the y number, 15 for the m number. Plug them in where they go. Okay, and then if I need it in slope intercept form, what would I do? No. Distribute. Distribute. We'd have to get rid of this 15. So y minus 75, we're just going to leave alone. Equals 15x. 15x minus 30. 15 times 2 is 30. <clears throat> it's almost in y equals, but I have this pesky 75 over here. What can I do to move it to the other side? Subtract uh, 15. So I'm going to leave 15 there. I need to get rid of the 75. Add 75 to both sides. So if I'm adding 75 here, I have to add 75 here. So I get y equals 15x plus 45. Correct? Okay, so that's how if you aren't given a point or if you're not given a slope and you're not given a y-intercept, that's how you get the equation. So here's my y equals mx plus b equation. m is 15. b is 45. What does that mean if b is 45? What, what is that? What the heck is b? The y-intercept. So my y-intercept is 45. And what did I tell you the clue words for y-intercept are? What are some of these up here? Starting amount. The, the starting amount. Initial fee. Initial fee. Service charge. Service charge. So if that's the case, what does that tell you about this situation? When you're renting your car, what is that telling you? That you need to pay 45 besides the days. There we go. That you have to pay 45 bucks to start with, and then you're paying how much every day? So What's happening every time? 15 every day. Okay, so that's what you're learning from this whole thing, is you're figuring out what the heck is going on. This means you pay 45 bucks service charge. It's $45 for your service charge. And $15, what's the dollar sign? Each day. 
That's what you just learned. You just figured out that my rate is $15. It's $15 every single day that I have this car. My starting point, my y-intercept is 45, which means even if I'm only keeping it for a couple hours, they're still going to charge me 45 bucks. Okay, that's how businesses are. Um, I always tell this story. when I, We lived in a really old house for a while um, that we were kind of working on. And um, we had just moved in, and the bathtub was one of those old, like, I don't know, those kind of, just kind of stained alone, those old yeah, big porcelain so bathtubs. It's, like, really big. So and um, it, it's cool looking, but it wouldn't drain. That wasn't so cool. Okay, so it would be, like, standing water, a foot of water. It was awful. Well, it also had, you know, the little knobs that look like uh, X's, kind of, or plus yeah. signs? Okay, so it had the hot knob, the cold knob, and then it had this random one in the middle which everybody thought was for the shower, but it didn't work the shower. So then we thought, well, maybe it was the drain, but it didn't work the drain. I mean, it just spun. And so my kids were really little. They would spin that little knob just for fun. Um, well, we called the plumbing people, said, come help us get this thing unclogged. We've poured, you know, three bottles of Drano down, and it's just still sitting there. Nothing will happen. It's the only bathroom we had, so we kind of needed to have a shower, you know, because that's a good thing. So we call, the little plumber walks in, walks in the door, sits down on the side of the tub, and says, oh, I've been here before. Takes his pliers and takes off that middle handle, and it had been stripped. So somehow, when my kid was spinning it, it happened to catch, and it did um, work the, the drain, so like it closed it off. But we couldn't get it to unclose it, because it would never catch again. So he just took his pliers, did it, I mean, it took him like five minutes. I get charged 50 bucks. Like, I'm serious, he could have told me that on the phone, you know, oh, just take a pair of pliers, I've been to that house. And I was like, seriously? He's like, well, that's the service charge fee, it's $50. He was there, not, I kid you not, no more than five minutes, he was in my house and out of my house, and my drain was fine. I was like, really? So, but that's how they are. The service company said they charge you initial service charge, and then he would have charged me an amount per hour had he been there longer. But he has to get paid, you know, he had to take time out of his day to make a stop at my house. <laughs> to come quickly fix it and then he was probably kind of happy because that was a quick 50 bucks and they could go on to the next one but that's how things work in the real world right so um anyway that's what that initial fee was so in that situation my initial fee was 50 bucks whether i liked it or not it was 50 dollars. i wasn't real happy but what can you do you kind of need a t uh, tub you know we needed to get clean i had two children and a husband who was a firefighter who really needed to take showers so um yeah so anyway, so that's kind of how that works. So that's the same thing here. $45 service charge, 15 bucks a day. That's what you're learning. So if I asked you how much would it cost you to have this car for 20 days, what would you figure out? How would you do that? Multiply. Multiply what? Um, 15 plus 20, 20 times, 20. times 20, sorry. 15 times 20, and you get a number, and then what would you have to do to that? Plus 45. Adding that 45. Isn't that that equation right there? Yeah. 15 times whatever your number is plus 45. So do y'all see what's going on? That's the math equation that explains the situation. That's really all algebra is. It's just kind of explaining what you logically can figure out because you do this all the time. You just don't realize it. Um, so that, that's really all that's going on right there. Okay, look at the next one. The graph shows the altitude of an airplane as it comes in for landing. Okay, this is just a graph. Can I figure out a rate from a graph? Can I figure out a slope from a graph? Yeah? Do y'all remember how to count up and down and count over? From one point to the next point on the graph, do the little stair steps? Yeah. Okay. So we can do stair steps on this graph. So if I was going up and down, first of all, what do you think that number is right there? Since uh, it's not labeled. 1,500. Yeah. 1,500. That makes sense. Right? Because it's 0, 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000. Doesn't that make sense? Yes, so you kind of got to know what your graph is labeled as. So it's starting out at 1,500 and it goes down how far? Um, 500. 500. So it goes up and down. The top number is 500. Then it goes across. We're going to say that's a point. I don't know if it's exact or not. It goes across how far? What is this? 60. 60. So our slope is this really weird number, 500 over 60. Is this a positive or a negative slope? It's a negative, because, negative it's going down. because it's going down. So let's go ahead and put a negative out in front of this. So it's negative 500 over 60. Type it in your calculator. And you 
get this weird decimal. Where can I put it where you can see it? There we go. Negative 8.33333. Okay, we don't want it to be like that because that's impossible to count on a, on a graph. So hit math, enter, enter. It'll reduce your fraction. We're going to make this slope negative 25 over 3. So m equals, I'll have a next one over here. There we go. So you can see it. You can. Oh, sorry. M equals negative 25 over 30. Thank you. Okay, so that's my M number. What other number do I need to write my Y equals MX plus B form? The Y intercept. I need the B number, right? So can you look at that graph and tell me the Y intercept? 1,500. 1,500. It crosses right there at 1,500. So B is 1,500. If you've got M and you've got B, hopefully you can just plug them in and write the equation. So Y equals the M number is negative 25 over 3 X plus or no, no, yeah, plus 1,500. There you go. This is slope intercept form. That's the slope intercept form. Because I can find the slope and I can find the intercept from a graph. That's pretty easy. I couldn't find the intercept from just the table because they didn't give it to me. That's why I used that other form first. <coughs> okay, so that one's an easy one to find the graph. What is that telling you? What's happening with this airplane? That it's decreasing. It's decreasing by how fast? By uh, it's Here's my slope. Three. Every three seconds, how far does it decrease? Oh, 25. 25 feet. So every three seconds, this airplane comes down 25 more feet. Okay, um, where did it start out before it started descending? 1500. At 1500. So, which, I don't know if that's accurate or not. I don't know anything about flying planes. But I don't know how high up they have to be before they start descending. But anyway, that's how far up it was, and that's how fast it's descending. But every three seconds, it's going down another 25 feet. That's what you're learning. That's what you're figuring out. So you should be able to figure out, well, okay, after 10 seconds, how low to the ground is it? That You just plug in a 10 for the X and figure that out. Or after five seconds, how low to the ground is it now? How far down has it come? Okay, that's why you're using that equation. All right, next one. This is the one about the fundraiser. back out because it's a good graph. <clears throat> I get that one glued at the top. When you see a graph, that should be like an easy one. Because a graph, you can find the slope intercept form from really fast. Because all you need is the intercept where it crosses the Y and the slope of how far up and how far over it goes. Once you've got those two things, you can write it. Okay, it says, I'm just going to read it. Students in a ninth grade class drew the following graph to represent how much money would be in the class fund after washing cars at a fundraiser. Okay, so that's what the graph is representing. All right, and if you were going to put points, it looks like there's a point left there. If you wanted to have good points to figure out your data, that's kind of what it looks like it's doing. Is this an increasing or decreasing rate? Increasing. 
increasing. Increasing. So slope, you know it's increasing, so it's going to be positive. Let's figure out our slope. So figure out how far up and how far over it's going. Now be careful because it depends on how it's labeled over here and how it's labeled down here. So this is like a one, two, three. That's, the odd numbers aren't labeled across the bottom, right? And this is 20, I'm guessing 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so if I go up and down, how far up and down am I going right there? 20. From oh, no. 40 to 50 is 10. So I'm going up, up and down $10, that's the top number. And I'm going over, how far? Uh, three. Three. So this is money on top, cars on bottom. So that's ten dollars for every three cars. That means people aren't paying very much for this car wash. Last time I went to a fundraiser car wash, they wanted ten dollars a car. What? So yeah. So it says money over cars. Top number's money, the bottom number's cars. So ten over three doesn't reduce. Is that a good deal? That's a pretty good deal to get your car washed, yeah, for about three bucks. Um, How did you get ten? Oh, no, because it goes up from 40 to 50. Yes. I meant $10. $10 is about average. Okay, so this is your slope. This is your M. It's 10 over 3. What's the other number I need to wrap my equation? Uh, y intercept. So if I need Y intercept, this is your B that you're looking for. Where does this one cross the Y? At 40. At 40. So let's write the equation. Y equals MX, so what's the M number? 10 over 3. 10 over 3. What is it? Y intercept B equals 40. Oh, okay, I, I couldn't tell if that was a M or B. So Y equals 10 over 3X plus 40. 40. There's my equation. So what, what is that telling you? Not every ten, three cars you have ten dollars. Every three cars equals ten dollars. What Plus else is the it 40. telling me? Plus the forty. And the forty is what? Because this is a chart for how much money's in their student fund. So the forty is um, how much they already had. How much they already had. Forty dollars in account. To begin with. So that's what you just figured out. They had 40 bucks in their account to begin with. They're making 10 bucks every three cars they wash. Okay, so if they're trying to really raise some money, they're gonna have to wash a lot of cars. What would happen if they had more money in their account to begin with? What would happen to my graph? It would, it would have started like in 60 or 80. So say if it had $60 to start with, on my graph, it would start here, but we still had the same amount of money per car. It would just be a graph that would be in parallel to this one, like that. It would just start up higher, right? Mm -hmm. What would happen if they got more money per car but didn't have more money to start with? So say they got $10 a car instead of $3 a car. It would go up faster. It would go up faster. They would still start at 40, but for every car, it would go up 10. So it would be much steeper like that. Okay, so do y'all see how looking at a graph can kind of tell you some things? That's the kind of questions they're going to ask you on star test. That's the kind of questions that um, make you kind of think outside the box a little bit more. That's what they want you to be able to do, is to logically look at the situation and go, that's what that means. Not just write me out a slope. That, writing the slope is great, but if you have no clue what it means in a situation, then it doesn't do you any good. So that, that's kind of why we're doing this stuff. Um, how many cars would it take them to reach 200? How would I figure that out? Divide 200 by 10. No. Is 200 going to be a Y number or an X number? $200. How many cars do they have to wash to reach $200 in their account? Y number, because that's the money side, right? This is money, this is cars. So if I wanted it to reach $200, I'd have to put that in for Y. 
So 200 equals 10 over 3x plus 40. If I need to figure out how many cars, that's my output number, I'm looking for the input number that will get me to 200. If you get a question like that, you're just plugging it in and solving. So how would I solve this? Add 200. Why do you move it? Move one. Oh wait, 10, uh, 10 over 3. Leave, let's leave 10 over 3, let's subtract 40 from both sides. Or actually I had y'all flip them, right? Because you always had the x first. Let's flip flop it, I'll rewrite it like this. So if you flip flop the whole thing, now what would you do? Subtract 40, right there. You still have 10 over 3x equals 160. And then on your calculator, you should be able to divide by 10 over 3. Even if you don't really like fractions, you can do this on the calculator. So you're going to have 160 and hit divided by, and then do parentheses. Just, it's going to look just like this. 10 divided by 3. So let me turn this light on real quick so you can see it. There you go. So 160 divided by parentheses 10 divided by 3. That's what you're doing. And you hit enter and you get 48. 48 what? What were we looking for? 48 cars. 48 cars. 48 cars. It's going to take us watching 48 cars to get to 200. That's a lot of cars for them to wash, yeah. They need to start charging more for their car wash. If you don't charge, if you ever do a car wash, just a secret is say donations only. Most people throw in at least $10. Just saying. So um, you get more money if you do that. Awesome. All right, um, let's look at these word problems. I think there's only four of them. You guys can go ahead and cut out each one of them. I don't know how many we'll have to be able to get done, but we'll look. You got one about Flotina, that's like my favorite word problem. Cracks me up that they named that person that. Cut out these four word problems. word problems, you are able to find the rate, which is your slope, and you're able to find the starting point, which is your y-intercept, most of the time. So most of the time from a word problem, the easiest thing to do is write it in y equals mx plus b form, just right off the bat. It's kind of like the graphs. Not always, but most of the time. Okay, so Stephanie 
small weighs 97 pounds. She goes on an eating spree and gains one fourth a pound per day. That's actually a lot to gain every day. But um, a fourth of a pound per day. Okay, first of all, is she increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Increasing. So you know it's increasing. Which means your slope is going to be what? Positive. Positive slope. All right, so you have two numbers. You have this number and you have this number. What is one of the clue words that should be jumping out at you from this twerk out? Per day. Okay, so this little word per goes with that. Remember per, each, or every, or the word rate. Either Any of those words will kind of help you find the slope. That means that number right there is your slope. So M is one fourth. That's her rate. And it's positive because she's increasing. What does that make 97? The right. Because that's her starting point, right? So her starting point, her y-intercept, which is b, is 97. That's her starting point. So can you write the equation if you have those two numbers? Mm -hmm. Hopefully you can write that. That should be easy. So it's y equals mx plus b, and the m number is 1 fourth. The b number is 97. There's your equation. Done. This isn't super complicated. Now, they may ask you questions like, how long will it take her to reach 160 pounds? Is 160 her total weight, which is this Y, or is 160 each day, which is X? What is 160? If I say, how long will it take her to reach 160 pounds? That's the Y. So you would do like we did on the one before, plug in the 160 for the Y and solve it. Okay, or they may say, how much does she weigh after 10 days? What would you do then? Plug it in for CX and solve it. Either way, it's easier always to plug in for X because that's your input number. But you can solve for Y, it's not that hard. Okay, let's do Flotina at the top of the next page. question kind of drives me crazy because they call it pedal boating and I call it paddle boating. Pedal boating. I've never heard it pedal, but anyway. But the fact that they named her Flotina, I just think it's hilarious, so. They were still showing us It's where your feet are actually under the water and under the boat. She's a new Disney. Oh, okay. The new Disney yeah, I, I know what he's talking about. I don't know like, there's these, it's like riding a bike. Yeah, yeah, on, on those, yeah, and they're like the square kind of looking boats and are sitting in that, mm -hmm. pedaling. Yeah, my suggestion if you've never done one of those before, <laughs> never go out as far as you think you should. Never. And those of you that have gone in one before understand what I'm talking about. Because then when you turn around and you have to go back, you're like, holy cow. That's the best Look how part. far away we are, oh my gosh. And then those big speed boats go by and they just keep knocking you farther out into the middle of the lake. And not from personal experience or anything. But um, yeah, by the time you get back, you're done. Um, but that's okay, we're gonna do, do Flotina. Um, this one kind of cracks me up because it's not very realistic, but that's okay. Flotina is pedal boating on a lake. <clears throat> she starts back towards the dock, which is 800 yards away. So she's out there, eight football fields out there. Okay, so she's out there. <clears throat> she goes at a rate of 50 yards per minute. So Flotina is a beast, just so if y'all didn't catch that. 50 yards a minute, like half a football field in a minute. Yeah, Flotina right. has thighs, like, I don't know, <laughs> huge. Okay, she might be named Helga in another lot. I don't know. Um, so anyway, she's going back to the dock. So her, you've got two numbers, you've got 800, and you've got 50 yards. Per minute. Per minute. That little word right there should clue you in that this one right here is which one? <clears throat> what is that? That's your slope. That's your rate. So 50 is your slope. Is this a positive or a negative slope? Is it increasing her distance or is it decreasing her distance? It's decreasing. Oh, my bad. I was to decrease. So it's decreasing her distance, which makes it negative. So it should be negative 50 is her slope. I was thinking it was increasing the distance she had gone. 
Yeah, hopefully not. She's going back toward the dock. So it's like well, she's I mean, the, the, the total is Yeah, like if you're adding up her distance, yeah. that It could be that way, too. We're going to do it as though she's decreasing the distance as she goes back. Okay, so um, how far away is she when she starts? What's her starting point? 800 yards. 800. So her starting point, B, is 800 yards. So you've got M, her rate. You've got B, her starting point. You should be able to write her equation. This is the rate. This is starting point. Y equals 50X plus 800. Almost. Y equals negative, negative 50X oh, plus 800. There we go. Negative 50x plus 800. Okay, so let's answer a couple questions about Flotina. How far away is she after six minutes? 300. She is 500 away. It takes after six minutes, how would you figure that out? Just multiply 50 times 6. 50 times 6, and then subtract that from 800, right? What you did? Five. So 50 times 6, subtract it from 800, five. and you get 500 yards. That's right. How long does it take her to get all the way back? What'd you say? It's like, oh, how many? 16, 16 minutes to get all the way back. So um, after 6 minutes, she's 500 yards away. In order to get all the way back, it takes her 16 full minutes. Now, no, if she got tired, it would be. I was going to say, that, that's a reason why this one isn't very realistic, because number one, Flotina is a beast. That's not real, real realistic there. Number two, she never tires, so she's also a robot. Hey, red um, She just keeps on, 50 yards a minute, never slows down. Okay, and it's so... It's like that one guy from the railroad track thing. The oh, guy yeah. who, like, killed himself because he kept hammering all the nails, so he's trying to out-hammer the train. Trained, yeah. I've not heard that story, but I, I I'll let you tell me when we're not recording. How about that? <laughs> I'm not even sure about it. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, like she goes and she never slows down, which makes me laugh because it means she was still going 50 yards a minute speed when she hits the dock. So she's going to, like, crash into the dock. So, um, so this whole scenario is not realistic whatsoever, but you kind of get the idea. Um, some of the other ones were much more realistic, not this one so much. But I still love this word problem. It makes me laugh every time. So, okay, um, do the car dealership one. And then leave a little space and go ahead and put down the sporting goods one. We'll be done with these and you'll be able to work on your assignment. Squigglies when we do domain and range. She swore she was going to name her child Flotina Squiggly someday when she had kids. Like she would say that to me all the time. Flotina Squiggly. What is she really name of it? That would be quite comical to me, but yeah. I wouldn't put it past her. She's a little... I would hate my mother if she would that. <laughs> Flotina! <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know if you're the foster home guy. Okay, let's look at this next one. A car dealership already has 40 cars in stock. That should kind of give you an idea of what that number is going to be. The auto manufacturer will now deliver new cars to the dealership by car carrier. Each carrier holds six cars. Write the linear function that relates the number of carriers to the total number of cars at the dealership. Okay, so this one's kind of wordy, a little bit more wordy than the last couple. <clears throat> but you've got two numbers. You've got this number, and you've got this number. And I already heard somebody say that 40 is going to be the B number. How do you know that? Because it already has it in stock. It's the That's beginning the amount. It's the starting amount. It's whatever you want to call it. So the initial amount. So B is 40. That's the starting amount. Which means that other number is probably... What's it going to be for, though? That's your M. That's your slope. Or your rate. And now the word each should help you figure that out. Each holds six. Now, don't always go by each, because sometimes per each and every aren't the slope, but usually they are. Okay, so the starting amount's 40. The slope is six. Write your equation. 
Oh wait, is it increasing or decreasing? I forgot to ask you that. Are we increasing the number of cars or decreasing the increasing. number? Increasing. So the slope is positive. So that we're okay. All right. So write the equations then. Y equals. What's it look like? Six x plus forty. Six x plus forty. Six x plus forty. So. How many cars after five carriers? How many cars would there be after five carriers? How do I figure that out? Just multiply. Just multiply? Yeah. What do I just multiply? Six and five. Okay, and then what? And you plug that for y. So you're putting a five right here where the x is, right? So what else do you need to do after you multiply? Add, Add your 40, because you started out with 40. So six times five is? 30, and 30 plus 40 is? 70. So you would just plug it in. Seventy cars. Oh, that's right. <coughs> and then it might ask you how long will it take you, or how many carriers, carriers would it take you to reach like 220 cars or something like that. That number would get plugged in for the Y. And you'd solve the other way. All right, last one. Sporting goods store sells cans of tennis balls. There are three tennis balls in each can. The tennis coach is buying supplies. Write a linear function that relates the number of cans to the total number of tennis balls. So I need M, which is my rate. I need B, which is my starting point. Or Y intercept. Those are the two things I'm looking for, M and B. Problem is on this one, I only see one number. Three. Three. So which one is that? That's the M. How do you know? Because it says they're in each. Three in each can. Yes. So M is three. That's your rate per can. What's my starting point on this one? It don't say. Does, so if it doesn't tell you a starting point and he's just you're trying to figure out how many total he's buying. He apparently doesn't have tennis balls stuffed in his jacket pocket. So what would your starting point be? Would be zero. We're going to say zero for the starting point on this one. Because we're assuming that he's going to buy tennis balls and he doesn't have a whole bunch of cans like in his arms as he walks in the door. Okay? So if that's the case, this should be a pretty easy equation. Y equals 3x. You could put plus zero, but do you really need to? No. No, you don't really need to. That's just extra writing. So the easiest way to write it is just 3x. So let's see if we can answer this question. How many cans if he needs 336 tennis balls? How would I figure that out? Wouldn't you divide 3 by 336 divided by 3. Yeah. Because 336 is going to go in for the y. And in order to solve that, all you're going to do is just divide by 3, right? That's logically what you're going to do anyway. Most of you can look at that and go, we'll just divide that by 3 because there's 3 in every can. Y'all have been doing that since, I don't know, 4th or 5th grade. Questions kind of like that. Um, so logically, you already know how to do that. You just don't necessarily know how to write it in an algebra equation. That's okay because that's what we're here for. How many cans do I need? 100. 100 what? It equals 112. 112 cans. Okay, so on your assignment, um, one thing I kind of wanted you to look at, let me turn this off real quick first. Maybe. I always do that. 